All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this boot off here. We got a bunch of 13 millimeter nuts all the way around. Get those blazed off and then we'll pull this boot off. All right, so here we have our outer unload auger. We've got three augers that are splined together in this tube. Now, I, I told the customer that these augers would run another year, but at the end of that year, they were going to be trashed because they're they're pretty sharp out on the ends. So, where he he decided to go ahead and replace these augers this year while we had the combine in the shop. A lot easier to do here with the scissor lift. So. We're gonna go ahead and replace these augers. So now we're gonna unbolt this bearing carrier right here and then just yank this thing out and then I'm gonna you know, thread it on the rails of this um, scissor lift and then pull the auger out. All right, now we got that auger yanked out. Now we're gonna go into the, the first hole here. And then we've got these four bolts that we need to take out. And then we can pull this auger out and we'll just start feeding it out that way and take it out the hole just like we did the other one.
All right, so the, the inner auger has carriage bolts holding it on, so the nuts are on the inside. So I gotta reach in there with the ratchet and a socket and take all four of those out. And then we'll yank this into this hole. And then we gotta push it all the way out the end of the tube. All right, so that inner auger wouldn't budge at all, and it's really common for it to be stuck on the splines down there in the turret on the 90 degree gear case that it splines onto. And if you can't pull it out through this hole, you know, sometimes you can take that door off and you can get in there and try to use a pry bar, but you know, there's really no good spot to pry on those augers. Um, when you pry on the flighting, it just wants to turn the auger. So I came up with a solution that I like to use. Um, I get a chain. I, gotta, I go to this second hole here and I feed a chain down in here, all right? And then I take the hose clamp off this, the middle auger. There's a hose clamp on the middle auger. I take it off. I put it on this first auger. And then I wrap a chain around the carrier like this. Then I come down. Well, we got to go back. Hold on. So then you pull your chain tight. You take a big alignment punch or pry bar, jimmy bar, whatever you want to call it. And you pull your chain tight and then you stick this in the chain link and then that gives you a good place to pull on this auger and then you just pull it. I already broke it loose for you guys, but it didn't take that much effort to pull it. And then if it doesn't go, then you just run your chain all the way out to the end of the tube, hook it onto the forklift and then boop, pop it out and just pull it all the way out with the chain. That's the easiest way to do it. Now you just take this and I can pull this auger all the way down. See, there it is. That's ready to fetch. All right, so there you go. I just showed you that one guy with a scissor lift and a forklift can take out all three of those horizontal augers out. Um, I think I did it in about 45 minutes. So and it's not too terrible. Um, now we just need to get these augers unboxed and basically, you know, shove the first one in. We're gonna have to 
take that door off up there because I'm going to have to time it to the vertical auger when I go in with that one. So that'll take the most time getting that first one in and getting it timed and getting in there. And then the other ones, we're just going to time them to where the flighting is 180 degrees apart. And then, you know, we put an auger in, spline it in, get it timed right, bolt our carriers in and just work our way out. Simple as that. All right, we got the new augers out this morning. We got the bearing carrier switched over. Um, normally don't have to replace those bearings. There ain't a dang thing wrong with those. I swear it's the best bearing John Deere makes. But uh, I just transfer them over to the new ones. Now we just shove them all back in. Okay, so I got the inner auger slid all the way down. So inside our turret here, we have our 90 degree gear case. And now I'm gonna go over the timing. So you want your vertical auger, you want the edge of the flighting to be parallel with this arm right here. It needs to look just like that. And then this horizontal auger, you want the end of the flighting to be pointing straight down. So parallel with that arm, straight down here. Now we just run this straight down onto those splines, get it splined, and hopefully it goes straight on. And then we'll come back here and get the carrier bolted on, and then we'll spin it, and we'll just verify the timing, make sure nothing hits. All right. So now it needs to go up and on. I like to take a couple boards, or well one, sometimes one will do, because whenever I stick my bar in here, I want to be more level so I can lift straight up on it. If I'm like this, the auger is going to want to either turn or go this way. So if I stick a board in there, I can get a, a little bit better of an angle. See, it wants to turn. You gotta constantly fight that. Sometimes it doesn't slide on there that easily, but um, I always put anti-seize on the splines so it's nice and lubricated. Maybe the next time we won't fight it as hard. And then you look through here, you're just going to double check your timing that we're 90 degrees apart. We look absolutely perfect, not even off by a spline. So I'm happy with that. Okay, now we gotta put these carriage bolts from the outside in. So what I like to do is I like to get this bottom one here started because I can get it all the way through. Put the nut on it, secure it down. 
Oh, here's the trick. You're gonna pick up the auger, stick an alignment punch in here, and that'll kind of hold it for you. Or you can get another bolt in. Start another knot. tighten those down just a smidge to get that carrier kind of into position a little better. You want to make sure the carriage, the square, is started in the hole on all of them before you start torquing it down. So many pages for parts. It's insane. It's just all day long. All right, inner auger is bolted in. Okay, when we spline the augers together, we're gonna have the end of the flighting 180 degrees apart from each other. So they should just kind of line up on opposite sides. We'll pick that up, spline that on, and then we'll bolt the end. All right, so the middle auger is bolted in. Now that we got the, I make sure the auger is pushed in on the spline all the way, and I get the carrier bolted in. Then I'll go back in and I'll put this hose clamp on there and, and tighten it where it needs to be right here just so that doesn't move. Okay, now we're going to put this last auger in. This one's the longest and heaviest one. Okay, same thing here. See how I got those augers timed? Just like that. Pick it up, spline it on there, and then bolt the end. Now all we got left is to bolt this carrier on, put our green saver door back on, put the boot on, and the unload augers are done. All right, so the unload augers are done. And those ought to be super smooth because deer balances all those augers and whenever you get them all timed right they run pretty dang smooth now we'll toss a new drive chain here for the unload auger and vertical and then that system will be complete all right we got the new drive chain on so that's all done now we're getting her shielded back up as we speak 
and I'm gonna work on the feed accelerator bearings. All right, so I got this shield out of the way. I take this nut, I'm gonna bust it loose, but I keep it on there because we're gonna put a puller into these three threaded holes here. We're gonna put a lot of pressure on it and try to pop this thing out. And I keep that nut on there so this thing don't go flying. So I'm gonna get the, the puller on there and get this pulley off. Okay, so I got my puller on here. I need to smack it, turn in the other direction. Smack it with a hammer. There she popped. placing these bearings they've got a little bit of up and down movement whenever I'm prying on them so especially the, the left hand side is worse it definitely clicked up and down so if you're gonna do one side you might as well do the other too 730 seconds Clean the shaft up a little bit. All right, so I'm trying a new technique here for the first time. We're just gonna play this out, see how it works. Cause um, what I'm thinking is I took the, the seals out and then I take the little plastic um, bearing cage out of there and then I roll the balls all the way down to where I can get into here. And what I'm thinking is taking a, a double cut burr bit and cutting through this inner race here to try to split it. Then I'll take the bolts out of the housing here and then I will turn it. And then you can actually tap this housing to put a bigger bolt through there and use them as push bolts. And then I'll try to use this, this housing to try to push that inner ace off the shaft. Um, normally I would just get to this point and I would take a torch and I would just cut through this bearing, but sometimes it's, it's hard to get through this inner ace and not damage the shaft. And then you've got a whole feed accelerator full of bean dust that can catch on fire. So you almost got to take some of the supports off and then try to get it cleaned out or you dose it down with a bunch of water or whatever and then when you take those supports out then that thing's unbalanced and it wants to always move and you know i might end up having to take those off i'm not sure yet but i'm tired of torching these and you know creating a fire inside or getting this shaft too hot i don't really like getting these shafts super hot i've seen them break before because um, someone was cutting them off with a torch and got that shaft too hot and then end up snapping. So I'm going to try to get that off without torching. We'll just have to wait and see, see if my technique will work here, but I figured it's worth a shot. We'll try it on this side where it's easier to get in here and just see what happens. Well, that Milwaukee die grinder made quick work of that. I just blazed a trail right through there and then I just smacked it 
with my air hammer with the chisel bit real quick and a whole <laughs> chunk of this bearing just dislodged. So that's cool. Anyway, then I tried turning it and now that race will turn on this shaft. So we should be able to get that pulled off pretty easily now. All right, now I'm gonna tap a couple holes, M12 here. bolts threaded in there. Ratchet strap to kind of support the weight. Like that. Look at that. Well, I tell you what, that was 10 times faster than trying to torch those things out or take the supports out and trying to get an air hammer on this thing. You know, once, once we got that inner race kind of broke, that kind of took the, broke this free to where it could start sliding off the shaft and using those pusher bolts really helped um, put enough pressure on there and then rattle in the shaft and then she come loose. So I don't, I didn't hurt the shaft at all. I didn't have to heat it. So I don't have to worry about um, that shaft getting too hot, which I really like. But 
you know, look at all this in here. You know, you go to torching this thing out, look at all that stuff to catch on fire. That's why I hate getting a torch in there. But if I do, you know, I gotta take the V accelerator all apart and try to get that all out. Or you, you know, soak it down or you, you put out the fire as you go. But that was just way easier to get in there and make a cut and then I was hoping to just use the air hammer and the chisel and just crack that race to where it, you know, it cracked through, but wasn't planning on a big chunk coming out, but it actually helped me a little bit. It's just that much less that I had to work off the shaft. So that worked. Now we just need to get the shaft cleaned up and uh, slide a new bearing on there. That right, shaft is cleaned up. Got a new bearing installed in a new housing. Get it started. Get my ratchet strap up the back up. Would you look at that? Look at it. Just look at it. That was so much easier. I do it with my bolts. fitting clock right okay so this side is done I don't have the lock collar on it yet I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side and get that bearing on and then I'll make sure that the feet accelerator is centered then I'll lock the lock collars on each side and put this pulley back on and then we'll be done with that job okay same process on this side I just cut through it with that burr bit enough to where I could hit it with the air hammer and this time it just cracked and that released enough pressure where I could use an air hammer and I could turn this on the shaft and then work some penetrant oil in there and I turned this and then I threaded tapped these holes threaded these bolts in and shoved them in and it just started pulling that bearing right off the shaft just like that now I just got to clean up the shaft slide a new bearing on and get the uh, feed accelerator centered, lock the lock collars, and then put the pulley on, and it's done. All right, I got this side done. I got the, the upper uh, feeder house drive belt tensioned up, and now we just gotta finish up putting the shields on this thing, and I'm gonna back it out and run it. The time has finally come for us to run this combine. Are you guys ready? Let's hit this thing. really smooth. Set this up for corn. When it's flashing, it's going to a certain set point. supposed to go. Got quite the, the dust cloud created now. But uh, she feels
feels butter smooth. I mean, smoother than most combines run, actually. Like, it's barely vibrating the seat, which is really good, so. Finally, got this thing whipped. I know you guys have been following along for a long time on this combine, and it's probably one of the biggest projects uh, on a combine that I've ever done, so. I appreciate you, all the guys that have watched this project all the way through the end. Um, if you could like and subscribe to the channel, I'd also appreciate that too if you haven't done that already. So we'll run this for a while out here and I'll take it back inside and check it all over once more and then we'll be good. And we'll run the feeder house through all the speeds here. run the, uh, the unload auger. Since we put new augers in it, let's see how those babies run. You can't even hardly tell it's on. Oh, look at the chunks coming out. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of junk in the grain tank. No raccoons came out though, so that's always good. All right, well that's gonna do it for this episode. Um, you know how the saying goes, the salesman sells the dream, I inherit the nightmare, and then I gotta turn it back around into the dream, right? So, a lot of guys would comment that, well, I would have just pushed this comment out in the middle of the field and just set it on fire. That thing would just be better off just burnt to the ground. But, you know, you can't you can't really do that. So um, we had to haul this combine in. We had to get it out of the field. You know, this combine was dead in the middle of the field. We had to rescue it, haul it out of the field, you know, bring it back to the shop, push it in, you know, do all the, the hydro repairs, you know, which took, you know, a long time to do. I don't I don't know exactly how many hours that I have in that repair. I know you guys are going to ask and everybody wants to know how long it takes and um, the cost of everything, but you know, a customer is is paying for this stuff, so I can't give out that information to you guys. So just know it took me a really long time. It took a lot of parts, so you know, it wasn't cheap to fix, but it's still cheaper to fix it than to just trade it in because you know, a trade-in cost, you know, the difference between the two machines, plus you have the repairs in there, it it doesn't make financial sense to actually, you know, to trade the machine unless you were just worried about this thing being a limit on down the road. But we completely eliminated all the metal contamination. Everywhere else that I've checked, you know, it has been clean. I'm really confident in this machine and I've done this like, I think this is my fourth one that I've done. And each one of those combines that I've done are still running today with zero issues. So I'm, I'm fairly confident that this thing's going to run just fine this fall. So hopefully the, you know, the filters will do their job, filter out whatever rest is in this machine. Um, I don't think there's going to be much, you know, I'll have the customer change the filters, you know, after another, you know, 50 to hundred hours or so, and it should be fine. So I'm confident this machine's going to run just fine. So um, a little update on the 9530 that we uh, had the transmission issue with, with the broken gear teeth. Uh, Patrick got the new reman transmission in the 9530, and he got all that done. Um, I was actually gone for a week. I went to Texas for vacation. You guys might have seen that on my Instagram, but um, he got that all back together while I was on vacation, and he fired it up, and it only had one leak, and it was just a little coolant leak on a on a heater hose line at the cab and he just had to you know swap a clamp out and put a different clamp on and get that uh, that leak stopped so he did a really good job on that tractor that was a lot of stuff that he had to unhook and hook back up and had no leaks on that machine and transmission worked flawless so he did a really good job on that and uh 
I think that pretty much wraps everything up and we can maybe start doing some new content and I don't have to look at this combine anymore. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching, like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time. Hey, look, an empty bay, freedom.